Yeah, microphone to David, please. Uh, I, I, had her, I, I found today to be so extraordinarily densely rich. I don't know if you guys have, and Sam, I hear it in you. And Michael, it really struck me what the thing you just said about how you got into NLP and all of the things you discuss about the things you found in life to kind of find yourself or save yourself, you know, from your depression. And um, because I, I got, I found acting because um, I was terribly, terribly bullied as a child. Um, funny enough, largely because I had in this extremely high voice like this, like my mother's voice, and I was bullied. Uh, I mean, really just terrifyingly, but I had no friends at all. I was hanging out with my sister, my, my teenage sisters and their friends. If you could imagine how boring that was there. 11 year old brother going to the mall with them. And, uh, and I found acting because acting in high school, I was friendless. I got into Romeo and Juliet and it was the first place I was ever allowed to communicate and express myself. So I really got into acting not because I really wanted to be an actor, that was the, wow, there's a place where I can communicate. And I see how my whole life has come around to what I'm doing, because I still act and I love to act, but I find acting absolutely terrifying. Uh, I go back to Milan, and I, I'm doing a movie on Thursday and I'm terrified about doing that movie, thinking about it. But the, in the coaching I do, I've basically become a person who helps people to express themselves, to communicate, and I never drew such a direct line between those two things. And how this is kind of related, the worst thing about being bullied is that I actually am gay. So as I was being bullied, I had this terror that, God, these people are right. I am gay. And this is actually what I talked about in the tiny group session you, you had this morning. I, it struck me, it started to strike me yesterday during lunch with uh, somebody else here, how um, the biggest example of the three principles at work in my life before I ever knew the three principles was the fact that when I was so absolutely terrified of what my life was when I was a young child because I realized I was gay with really happy parents in 1970s America with television, with movies, with everything that showed what life was. It was heterosexuality and family. There was literally no fresh thought in my mind that I might possibly be able to construct a happy and loving life. I loved my parents. I saw love all around me. I was a really extraordinarily happy child. But this extraordinarily happy child became this precocious overthinker. I mean, I was thinking about things and the future at age 12 that <laughs> makes me laugh now when everybody else was doing whatever they did at age 12. And, uh, and to have this insight yesterday that it, it really was this underlying sense of, I don't understand this now, but I'm not going to commit suicide. And there were other kids in my high school who committed suicide, and I know it's because they were gay. And I know that, I mean, there are studies done that many, many adolescents who commit suicide commit suicide. I understand this because they're there. And this was such a powerful thing for me yesterday to think that was really wisdom under me. I didn't trust it at all, and as I explained in our little group this morning, I, I was, I remember going to church in a you know, really religious family, and I was saying, you know, God, I don't know exactly what you want from me, because I know I'm gonna go to hell because I'm like this, but I know I didn't choose to be like this. I mean, my God, I was 12 years old. I wasn't even masturbating yet, maybe. Uh, but by the way, that's what the other 12-year-olds would do. <laughs> I mean, it may have been over heterosexual imagery, but that's what we were up to. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, the, to, to bring this to an end, it was, uh, it was. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the happy ending. <laughs> so as I was emotionally telling the story in my, in my small group, one of the other partners in the group, I noticed, became very emotional. And she told me that her son had just come out. So it was, uh, it, was a very, it was a very beautiful, beautiful morning in our small group. And then Hugh got the microphone in the end and he said, well, I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanna put that out there, folks. <laughs> oh. uh, you, you know, I, I thought I grew up alone on the island of misfit toys, but I think pretty much everyone I met grew up on the island of misfit toys. Right, that's far more common an experience than, um, than I thought it was. 
I, absolutely. And if I can add one more thing yeah. related to that insight that came quickly after, I remember first feeling like this absolute misfit and feeling really less a value than anyone else. And it also made, you know, I wanted to please my parents more. I felt this ultimate defect that would, ima that would eventually come to the surface meant that I had to work much harder than any other human being because I was less. But then after coming out, came upon this arrogant new attitude, which was, no, I'm not less, I'm actually more. That all that suffering made me both special and deserving of more. I don't have to work as hard as other people. I've already had my suffering when I was a child. Now I can have my childhood. <laughs> and coming through the end, and I felt that terrifyingly late, I came through the end of that last bit. And I think really meeting the three principles had a lot to do with that, metabolizing that last wrong thought. So I grew up and suffered with one, one wrong thought, went into a new wrong thought, and maybe I'm in a new wrong thought now, but it doesn't feel like it because it feels so much more relaxed and natural, and I just feel like a human being, like I felt in that small group this, this morning sharing that story. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. I want to applaud. I don't know. <laughs>